This has been one of the greatest questions in the year 2024 from business as well as markets. Is a global recession really on the horizon? Spoiler alert, it's not as gloomy as you think. What if I told you that despite the doom and gloom that is in the news today, a global recession might not be on the cards for 2024? Stick around as we explore why some economists are cautiously optimistic about the year ahead. Okay, let's jump into uh, some of these reasons uh, why a recession might not be knocking on our door in 2024. Now, it's clear that there's been a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace, uh, especially the financial markets in the year 2024. But the truth of the matter is that uncertainty doesn't necessarily mean that automatically we go into a recession. Remember, the markets are cyclical in nature and by such that we will always have fluctuations where the market goes up and it goes down, sometimes in short periods of time. However, it also bears mentioning here that a technical or recession is a situation whereby uh, the economy, global economy in this case, faces two consecutive terms of a slump in growth. So we mean that if there is a decline in growth, all right, uh, in GDP figures, because we're measuring growth in GDP, GDP decreasing, uh, meaning that the output that is produced by the global economy has decreased for two consecutive terms, which is six months. And then technically that will count for a recession. We haven't seen that of late. We have heard rumors of a, of a recession. We have seen slumps here and there, but not enough to go into what is called a technical recession. As a matter of fact, you find that there are a lot of economists that uh, are split in between. Some think that uh, indeed we might go into a recession while others are saying uh, it's not as gloomy as uh, some of them are saying. So this suggests that we still have opportunities to see a uh, some growth here and there and patches of stability despite the instability that we have seen in the past especially the 4th 5th of august where we saw a massive sell-off in the stock markets all around the world the imf uh, is predicting that global growth will slow to about 2.9 percent year on year now what that means though is that there is some something happening. It doesn't mean that there is a decline. Growth is there, but it's slowing down. But here is the kicker. The kicker is that emerging markets are going to pick up most of that growth. Uh, as much as we're seeing the more developed economies in the West uh, slowing down, much of this growth is going to be coming from emerging markets. So this could be a good avenue for you to channel your investments, channel your monies into emerging markets, find out exactly what is making them kick, what sectors, what industries, is it energy, is it, is it natural resources, whatever it is, there is some growth happening there and these are opportunities that you can exploit. Remember when inflation was keeping you awake at night? Now there is some uh, good news all around the predictions are that uh, inflation is slowing down. Now, the good thing about inflation slowing down, it means that we'll begin to see an increase in demand for output, right? Inflation slowing down means that prices are going into those ranges where people may begin just to buy more. If people buy more revenues for businesses, revenues for companies, revenues for a whole countries will begin to increase. When that increase, this becomes the right kind of motivation for producers to produce more. And when that happens, we know that we're talking about growth because remember I said that economic growth is measured in GDP. GDP, which is the value of total output that is produced by the factors of production in a country within a particular year. So if that uh, inflation is going down, more demand for output 
more production therefore we are bound to see growth instead of a slump job markets as well as a financial market seem to be loosening up also which might create this balance uh, and with that balance then there's optimism in the market therefore we will begin to see a little bit of free flow in terms of finances now once you are here you might be asking yourself this question okay uh, there is all this uh, optimism in the market but what does it mean for you personally as an investor where are you supposed to channel your money what sort of strategies are you supposed to pursue in such a particular market first things first you need to have the right kind of mindset uh, you need to face the music in this case uh, when people hear uncertainty fear always paralyze them so we need to continue putting your money to use the issue is not letting negative news out there paralyze you always remember whenever there is negativity there is always something uh, positive also happening in the market there is always a silver lining try to look for those silver linings whenever the dark, dark clouds are popping up in the market don't let fear paralyze you remember knowledge is power with the right kind of knowledge you will know exactly how to channel your money to which investments in which sectors to get the most benefit out of your equity the second thing you ought to be doing is think long term now obviously uh, all this uncertainty that has happened uh, is short term now the market always will get these jitters when news has been released well, probably about a particular indicator things happening things seemingly being gloomy however we have seen the market bouncing back within certain time periods usually long-term investments are always better so think long term don't let short-term news uh, cripple your investment efforts think long term usually is the picture is clearer if you look at long-term prospects of that particular market you need to also embrace the roller coaster ride that the market will take you on uh, you need to also try to reframe what volatility means to you in most cases when the markets are fluctuating up and down the moment they're getting they're going down like what happened uh, with the massive stock sell-off it meant that uh, you find bargain opportunities uh, stocks are going on sell because they are going lower it means that there are opportunities to buy them at a cheaper price which is what you're looking for and then you can sell them later at higher prices the fourth one is what i've said over and over again diversify 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 remember putting your equity in different uh, investment across different sectors will give you a better opportunity to leverage one investment against the other and therefore giving you better opportunities to remain afloat even when certain sectors or industries are facing a negative uh, circumstances in the market although 2024 might not be sunshine and rainbows remember uh, that as it seems right now is not really the uh, market apocalypse that some have uh, pronounced it to be what you need then to do is stay informed ensure also that you uh, think long term as well as do not be afraid to seek professional advice in your particular situations there are a lot of financial advisors you could go to your bank you could go to any professional financial advisor who will be willing to give you that kind of financial advice at a professional level that you can use to better make your financial investment decisions i'm interested to find out from you exactly what you think in terms of uh, avenues that you're going to pursue in such an unstable environment what are you doing with your money and what sort of benefits are you looking forward to let's share the ideas and let us grow together on this channel this is friday money matters we'll see you next time happy investments